I don't subscribe to that whatsoever. However, I'm always like, I'm gonna throw a little shade back. I might go a little deep, but not too much because again, People are watching. For me, Minna, do I wanna be shaking and rumping and pumping and popping and dropping and locking? I feel uncomfortable to be doing something like that. Okay, now I'm giving death washed up on the side of the seashore. My wing stop came and I had to throw on a face mask to get my food and eat it, so. <laughs> What up, it's your girl Minna. In this video, we are going to be have a little heart to heart. You feel what I'm saying? We're gonna just chit chat and I'm getting unready for the day. So if you're not already subscribed, do that now or later, but make sure you do it, okay? Follow on Instagram and IG. Just know that I post three times a week here on YouTube. So don't miss any of those videos. Turn your notifications on because it's important. So I'm taking off my makeup for the day. I did my makeup and I love it. And I always hate the taking off process. So now I'm like, let's chat while I take it off to give myself another reason to one, be on camera and to use the makeup because I don't think it got enough mileage today. If you're wondering, the foundation is Lancome Tantido. My goodness gracious. Lashes are always the usual. I'll link it below, okay? Let's talk. This is a topic that I have talked about offline several times, but of course, am now bringing online to talk to you all. Now, you may be a content creator listening, or you may just love makeup and beauty, you're here, but you may still find this topic interesting. In a way, I wanna make this a top five things type of video where we see on TikTok that is going around, but it's really just all encompassing. So I've written down three different topics that we're gonna just talk about as I take off my makeup. So the first point that I wanna talk about is online etiquette. I am obviously not immune to any of these things. Nothing about me is perfect, but I just pray to God I never fall into this kind of stuff. I know how easy it is to fall into it, but it is so detrimental and always at top of mind for me as well is just overall professionalism. And it's because of my background studying business administration as an undergraduate student. And then of course, we're going on to study masters in higher education and just the different types of jobs that I've had and I plan on discussing it in a different video comment if you want to if you want to see that video it's colored the way that I am now and the way that I work now so it's it's really it really I just I just praise God online etiquette is huge okay I remember distinctly yo when I had a personal Twitter account and <laughs> I had this friend here in Houston. Oh my God, this was ages ago. And she and I were beefing about something just strange. It was so stupid on Twitter. And I was just going in on her and vice versa. And I think about that time all the time because I'm like, yo, I could not imagine that happening in this day and age because of the work that I do and the fact that that will carry on forever. So I'm, what I'm saying is this stuff is real serious because, so let me talk about myself. Not only do I have an audience who follows me, you obviously watching this video, in my audience are not only common people who are just interested in my life or the content that I create, but are also folks that work in companies that work with brands that will eventually be the ones to hire us or deny us opportunities. So just imagine your content being watched by potential bosses, potential hiring managers, if you're thinking of the corporate world, right? This is what I think about when I think about the content the I, that I create. For instance, this video right now, you might be a hiring person or a brand rep for XYZ Rand, or of course you may be XYZ person in his or her living room, you just find me entertaining, you stumbled upon this video, what have you. These are the things that I always have to keep top of mind because people are watching. How do you think we get discovered? Someone has come across our content and been like, she's real chill. Let's add her to this batch of influencers that we're gonna pitch to X brand or whatever, you know? I'm always focused on being my 100% authentic self. Of course, I do keep a lot of things private, but I also share what I feel is appropriate in order to, of course, connect and allow for you to relate to me but I'm always mindful that yeah this is me and this is my platform now I really can't see y'all <laughs> everything is blurry so if I happen to have something crazy on my face I really can't see I'm always mindful of who could potentially be watching and I implore I implore other content creators young 
mature, new to the game, been doing this for a while, you will probably already know if you've been doing this for a while, it is just so important for the newbies out here. This is all fun and games until you're taken off of a list for a potentially big brand deal because a brand rep saw you on stories acting a plum fool. It's all fun and games until a brand rep that is following you from their personal page sees you fighting with another influencer online or God forbid, someone in your audience. Now, that doesn't mean that I tolerate all kinds of abuse from people. I don't subscribe to that whatsoever. However, I'm always like, I'm gonna throw a little shade back. I might go a little deep, but not too much because again, people are watching and we just have to be mindful of that. With this job that we do, it's very easy to feel like, oh, you know, it's just, just a, I'm a sole proprietor or I'm, I'm, this is my corporation, my company, I can do what I want. I own my own business, I manage myself. Yes, all those things are true, but we get paid by brand reps who are people who are following us. If I am engaging in behavior that is distasteful, offensive, off-putting in any way, that would hinder me. And I always have to think about that when it comes to controversial topics, just things in general. When I want to go off, it's like, let me just really hone it in here because this could be detrimental to me and I, it's not worth it. This is the Pharmacy Peaches and Clean Cleansing Balm. I love it because it is a balm and it's going to turn to an oil. I'm gonna rub it on my face. This is the Elf Skin Cleanser with oat milk, alantoin, and niacinamide. So all important things to think about, girl. I am a professional at heart. Again, it's because of what I studied in both undergrad and grad. It's always top of mind. And I, I, I'm, I just don't have that personality to break out of it. I even find it difficult to let comfort completely loose online. <laughs> like I dance, obvi, right? Like literally was in a gun as a CJ called Child Troop when I was growing up. Like, come on, son, you feel what I'm saying? But I, me, Minna, I find it difficult to be online dancing. Okay. When I mean by that is, you know, like doing TikTok dances. I just, for me, Minna, find it difficult to even say, say, oh, I'm about to go do a dancing video. Like it looks fun. It looks amazing. It looks fantastic, stupendous. I just cannot see myself doing it again. I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. Okay. And I, that's really because of my background. I'm just so stuck with gotta be professional, gotta be professional. And granted, with what we do, it's very loose, it's very casual, but I'm just always thinking, okay, business-wise, do I wanna be shaking and rumping and pumping and popping and dropping and locking in front of someone that is gonna potentially send me a campaign offer? I, Minna, again, I'm saying this because it says me, not you. You should do whatever you want. I'm just about me, my, me myself, and I is all I got in the end. This is what I found out. I'm talking about me, okay? Me. I feel uncomfortable to be doing something like that. That's just me. <laughs> okay, let's rinse. Okay, now I'm giving death washed up on the side of the seashore. My wing stop came and I had to throw on a face mask, go get my food and eat it. So <laughs> that's what's going on right now. I'm gonna spray this Caudalie Eau de Beauté Beauty Elixir on my face to further hydrate. I had to take it off of my mouth area to eat peacefully. <laughs> This is nice and minty. I've used this before in the past and I must have had irritation around my eyes because it was burning. It's not burning right now, but it is minty. So I should have avoided the eye area because imagine mint is a little spicy. So it does feel a little uncomfortable, but it smells really good and it's, it's a nice product to use for sure. Along with online etiquette while I take this off and then further 
do my ooh, skincare routine. Oh, I forgot what to tell you what this was. The pack is in my studio, sorry. <laughs> Along with online etiquette is honestly and truly who you hang out with, okay? And I know firsthand that it is a challenge to make genuine friendships online. I'm looking to see what I wanna use, Dermalogica Circular Hydration Serum. It is a challenge because everyone is in their respective countries, cities, states, areas of town. And it's like, what? It's very easy to be foo-foo friendly on the internet, but you don't know what it's gonna be like when you meet the person in person. And to be honest, it is very easy to develop or create an online persona. I'm sure this is not news to you. So that when you meet the person, it may or may not match the online persona. With that being said, when meeting up with, hanging out with, sharing space, with doing life with other creators that are or end up becoming problematic online, we have to understand, I have to understand that this is going to affect me professionally. So if you are a creator, that is something to think about. It is inevitably going to affect you professionally. How? Simple. If I hung out with non problematic content creators and we showed online a very healthy and fun this is bioscience squalene marine algae eye cream relationship why wouldn't they want to sign the two of us or the three of us or the four of us or whatever on a campaign if they needed multiple people why not sign people that already get along in real life now the opposite is true if people are fighting why would a brand want to invite two people who don't get along why would they want to invite both of you on set for a campaign or at an event god forbid it's never gonna happen so it affects us in both ways and these are things that i think about it's just it's just so important it's just so important next is event etiquette now listen it is not lost on me that these events are extremely fun if you are invited to the right one okay and you know if the brand got a budget and they're looking to really wine and dine the kid or whatever you really could be enjoying one's self on these brand trips and i've only been on a few but baby it's amazing okay but that does not mean when I'm on the trip, I'm on vacation. Even if it's a brand trip where they've not contracted me for specific deliverables, I'm not dumb. I'm a mature woman. I understand that, although again, like I said, I've not been contracted for specific deliverables, the brand would greatly appreciate organic content and I am what a content creator you know so inevitably unless I choose not to which I haven't ever done because why right but if I'm gonna go I'm gonna create content if I'm not gonna create content I'm not gonna go and that does not mean that I am in the business of working for free absolutely not my car note is not free okay it costs money but of course I create content organically and this is always a great way to show appreciation and just to it, it's just fun to me, right? I'm trying to find out what I want to put on next. Let me just put on hyaluronic acid, more hydration. But with this, it doesn't mean that it is time for me to just, again, let loose and act a fool. I just am not that kind of a person. I, again, midnight do be I, because of who I am and because of my background and where I've worked, I just always have this thing where I'm always thinking professionalism, professionalism, professionalism. It may make me uptight in some situations, but to be honest, it makes me aware. Aware of my surroundings and aware of what's going on. There's always an opportunity to perhaps land a deal or literally tank a deal that you did not even know could have been coming your way. Do you understand? So at these events, although it was mad fun, I would never get drunk trashed. I would never forget where I am. I always have a smile on my face, I'm conversational and all that because you just don't know who you're speaking to or who you just passed by or perhaps who you've let the door close, whose face you've let the door close on. It's just stuff like this that I'm always aware of and I don't think a lot of people are aware of. It is important that professionalism be at the forefront of our minds. This is a career that many people just stumble into. It's not like we've gone to school for it. I've gone to school for two degrees that I'm not necessarily using, but I am because as you can see, there are 
it's just ingrained in me a lot of things that I am for sure using in what I do right now, but I literally did not go to a trade school to be a content creator, right? We get that. But I'm just saying, a lot of times I feel and I've seen, <laughs> you know, there's just a level of decorum that is not present for a lot of people. And it's, it's like a secondhand embarrassment because it's like, yo, we gotta really do better. And I'm not saying black women, I'm just saying content creators in general. I just be like, dang man. And that's a missed opportunity. It just, it's its something to talk about because it, I, I get it. it. It is very easy to be extremely, like I said, casual and fun and maybe get drunk and then make IG stories, act in a who or get drunk at an event and be all wilding out and stuff. And it's like, yo, we are number one, one another's peers, but again, brand reps are around. And think about it too, even as peers, there are lots of folks we know now that have gone on to create brands and they're never gonna forget their interactions with me or anyone else on brand trips, at the grocery store, at the airport, whatever, they may or may not have seen you. These are lasting impressions that we are making on one another. To me, every encounter is a networking opportunity. Not one where I'm thinking, let me see what I can get out of this. It's absolutely not. People in, on the brand side move around. <laughs> Hello. They move around. And not only that, they are not stupid. They remember things and they talk. Yo, they be knowing each other and you don't be thinking they know each other and next thing you know they know each other and you might have thought that something went down with XYZ brand and you thought whatever that was just in a, in a capsule in a little closet. No one's gonna know about it. I never posted it online, what's the big deal? And then next thing you know, at this other brand, they actually know the brand rep at XYZ company and now they're sharing notes because let's be honest, influencers share notes with one another about each other. What do you think that the brand reps are doing? They're people too. They're like our age, you know? Minus and plus 10 or so years. Like, <laughs> we're all the same. This is First A Beauty Dry Oil. The last aspect is business etiquette in general. I mean, when it comes to email writing, I just don't know. Like, do people even realize when writing an email how to write a professional email? I mean, I... And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's been mentioned to me, the professionalism in my emails. And I just think to myself, like, if you're having to mention this, then that means that it's you're not seeing it enough. And that to me is problematic because I'm just like, what is going down in the emails? You know, we're not sending emails like a DM. Even DMs, when it's with a brand, I'm writing it you know, like an email because this is a professional communication. Even if this person is younger than me, my age, or what have you, a black woman, you know, I never forget the fact that you are what? A brand rep. You're not my girlfriend. You see what I'm saying? And there just, again, is a level of decorum that is required, I feel, to really do well in this space and this might be helpful for you if, again if you are a content creator if you are interested if you are just curious in general i just feel like as fun and loose and freeing and free as this business is this is a business we can't forget about professionalism and etiquette so like i said online etiquette event etiquette and business etiquette in general i've learned and seen still need to carry itself into what we do but this also could apply to what you do as well you know it's just all very important so anyway i can barely see because i don't have my glasses on <laughs> so am i in focus i don't know but let me oil my room my edges put my virgin hair fertilizer on my edges and i'm gonna go to bed I did brush my teeth off camera. So yeah, anyway, comment and let me know what your thoughts are on anything that I discussed. Are you a creator? Does it make sense to you? Do you care? <laughs> are you not? Does it make sense to you? Do you care? <laughs> comment and let me know. I post three times a week. So make sure you subscribe here. Follow me on Instagram and think sign. Oh, and also Pinterest, honey. Don't trip, don't delay. And I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye.